On the AP exam, there will be four free response questions. This video is modeled after FRQ number three. It's about sinusoidal modeling. Let's pretend it's from the 2007 exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Contestants on the popular game show, The Price is Right, take turns spinning a large wheel to see who can get closest to $1 without going over. A pointed indicator is positioned at the center of the wheel that is 8 feet in diameter. Point S is on the outside edge of the wheel. To ensure the wheel is working properly, the producers of the show perform a series of test spins. A motor spins the wheel in a counterclockwise direction, completing one rotation every 8 seconds. As the wheel spins at a constant speed, the height of S above the pointed indicator periodically increases and decreases. At t equals 0 seconds, s is at the same height as the pointed indicator. The sinusoidal function h models the height of s above the pointed indicator in feet as a function of time in seconds. A positive value of h of t indicates s is above the pointed indicator. A negative value of h of t indicates s is below the pointed indicator. Part A. The graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, F, G, J, K, and P, are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates T, H of T for the five points F, G, J, K, and P. Let's begin by finding these three values on the vertical axis, the maximum, the minimum, and the midline. H models the height of S above the pointed indicator. This red thing is the pointed indicator. The wheel has a diameter of 8. So S will periodically go 4 feet above the midline and fall 4 feet below the midline. So the midline is going to be 0 in this case. And we will have a maximum height of 4 and a minimum height of negative 4. With these five values on the vertical axis, we now know the output value of all five points. Now let's see if we can determine the input value of each point. At t equals 0 seconds, s is at the same height as the pointed indicator. So at t equals 0, s is 0 feet above the pointed indicator. So we need to pick one of these points where S is on the midline and call it T equals zero. However, I need you to be extra careful when starting from the midline. These points are not all the same. For example, this point is on the midline, but immediately after this point, S begins to rise. This point is also on the midline, but immediately after this point, S begins to fall. So, which is it? At time t equals zero, uh, does the point begin to rise, or does the point begin to fall? The key is that the wheel is rotating in a clockwise motion. So if point S begins at the midline at time t equals zero, immediately after this, it will begin to fall. So t equals zero, must be at a point like this one or this one, where not only is the point on the midline, but immediately after t equals zero, s begins to fall. So let's call this position t equals zero. The wheel completes one rotation every eight seconds. In other words, the period is eight seconds. The duration of one full cycle is eight seconds. Since the beginning of this period is at t equals 0, then the end must be at t equals 8. The halfway point must be t equals 4. Half of that must be at t equals 2. And then we're counting by 2's. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8. Going to the left a quarter of a period, we have the input value of negative 2. Now that we have all of the input coordinates and the output coordinates, we're ready to list the coordinates of the five points. 
point F is at negative 2 comma 4, G is at 0 comma 0, point J is at 2 comma negative 4, point K is at 4 comma 0, and point P is at 6 comma 4. So that's it for part A. Part B, the function h can be written in the form h of t equals a times the sine of b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of the constants a, b, c, and d. I want you to memorize what the parent functions look like for y equals sine t and y equals cosine t. Notice that for sine t, it starts at the midline and then goes up and down and back, whereas cosine t starts at its maximum value and then goes down and back up. h of t is sine t after four transformations, so let's highlight a part of the graph that looks like this. Let's use this period of the graph to build a model of h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. Each one of these letters represents a transformation of the parent function sine t. The a value gives a vertical dilation. So look at the parent function. The distance from the midline to the highest point is 1. Now compare that to the same distance on the graph of h of t. The distance from the midline to the highest value is 4. That's a vertical dilation by a factor of 4. So the a value is 4. In the context of periodic functions, this is called amplitude. So learn this term. I'm going to save the b value for the end. So let's move on to the c value, which corresponds to a horizontal translation. Notice that the parent function begins at t equals 0. Extending the horizontal scale one more quarter period to the left, we see that this period begins at negative 4. So that is a horizontal translation by negative 4. In Unit 1, we learned that a horizontal translation by negative 4 shows up in the equation as positive 4. That's the value of c. Here's another term you need to learn. In the context of periodic functions, instead of calling it a horizontal translation, we call it a phase shift. So this graph has a phase shift of negative 4. The value of d corresponds to a vertical translation. Notice that the parent function has a midline at 0. h of t also happens to have a midline at 0. So there is no vertical translation. Uh, or we could say the vertical translation is 0, and that is the value of d. Normally we don't write it when it's a 0, but we're going to write it this time, because the whole point is to find the values of a, b, c, and d, so we want to explicitly show that the value of d is 0. So let's move on to finding the value of b. I want you to memorize this little b value formula b is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. We know that the period is 8, therefore b will equal 2 pi divided by 8, which reduces down to pi over 4. And we can just fill that in right here. On the AP exam, they will give you an answer box that you can use to record the values of a, b, c, and d like this if you wish. Or you may leave the answer box blank and record your answer as an expression for h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in like this. Part C. Refer to the graph of h in part a. The t coordinate of j is t1 and the t coordinate of k is t2. In this case, t1 is 2, and t2 is 4. C part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? 
is h positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing. We see that h of t is increasing from t1 to t2 because the output values are rising from left to right. Next, we must decide if h of t is positive or negative on this interval. Well, just look at our vertical scale. The output values are between 0 and negative 4. These are all negative values. So h of t is negative and increasing on the interval from t1 to t2. So the answer is C. C part 2. Describe how the rate of change of h is changing on the interval from t1 to t2. In unit 1, we learn that where h of t is concave up, the rate of change is increasing, and wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. Since h of t is concave up on the interval from t1 to t2, the rate of change is increasing. Since they did not ask us to explain our reasoning, it's safest to give a one-word answer. Just say, increasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.